Dungeons and Dragons is a fantasy tabletop role-playing game. It is a game of imagination played by a group of players who assume the role of warriors and spellcasters, going against villains and challenges controlled by the Dungeon Master. The Dungeon Master is also the storyteller and adjudicator of rules. Without a Dungeon Master, there can be no game. Hello everyone, my name is CJ. I'm the creator of the How to Play Dungeons and Dragons 5e series and also the 5e class guide series. After learning how to play, I think it is time for you to step up to the plate and pick up the badge of the Dungeon Master. This video series will teach you how to become one using the 5th edition rules. But the principle of Dungeon Mastering is the same no matter what edition you are playing. Just to be clear, this first video is intended for complete beginner DMs, running a game for equally new players. Some of the things I will be talking about in this video is going to be very obvious to those who have run a few games themselves. But to get everyone on the same page, I will start with a few general advice before walking you through a mock game session. Keep in mind that this is just a simplified version of my DMing style. You can use it as a reference until you develop your own. Future videos in the series will cover each component of the game in greater detail. So without further ado, let's roll initiative. It goes without saying that a dungeon master should be familiar with the rules of Dungeons & Dragons. Ability check and combat rules are a must. Spells and adventuring are also highly recommended. The first level class features of the class chosen by your players is also very helpful. But you don't have to remember everything. If you forget a rule, you can always look it up. But don't let every single rule details bog down your game. If looking up the rules is going to take longer than 5 minutes, then you should just invent something to your best judgement. Keep the game flowing. Unless your ruling causes a character's death or put your players at great disadvantage, fix the ruling at the start of the next session. Dungeon mastering is an art, rather than just a procedure of following the rules. You are not a computer, so expect to make a lot of mistakes. Even I still make mistakes after years of dungeon mastering, and I have interpreted a few rules the wrong way for months, or even years until my player corrected me. So don't worry about not getting it perfect the first time, because you can always improve. Before going ahead creating your own adventure, I highly recommend playing through smaller pre-written adventures first. You can buy the starter set and play the first chapter of the Mind of Vandalver campaign that comes with it. But I must warn you that the Mind of Vandalver and other campaign books are actually pretty tough, and the combat encounters are never exactly balanced for your party. They can't tell how many players you have at any time anyway. And if you make your players fight every monsters in every room in the dungeon, they will be wiped out halfway in. So it is up to you to adjust the encounters. It is possible to do it slowly, with plenty of short and long rest. If your players love their dungeon crawling and want lots of challenging fights, that's fine. But keep in mind that it will take a long time to advance the story. The main takeaway here is that you should use pre-written adventures as the raw material for your own adventure. You don't have to use everything. Just take the parts that you like. If you're running official games for Adventurously, there are more restrictions, but for every other game, you are free to do whatever to entertain your players. For the sample session, I will use this short pre-written adventure that I've created myself. It mimics the style of official adventure modules, but it has printable maps and pawn pieces. The pieces fit the size of the enlarged maps so that you can use this if you don't have any miniatures. When starting out, I suggest using pawn pieces like this, or even just the characters' names written on paper to represent their location. It doesn't matter if the map is not to scale, it will save you a lot of time from arguing about where everyone is actually standing. You can download this module from the link in the description below. If you have run this adventure, you can practically run most pre-written adventures. Before the game starts, tell your players what they should expect. For your first game, this part shouldn't take longer than a few minutes. Go through the general rules of the game, what the dice are for, and tell them that the DM has the final say on rulings. Then go through player ethics and things you expect out of them. Tell them whether the game is going to be PG or mature. Suggest but don't tell other players how to play their character. No backstabbing, at least for the first game. 
I am going to talk more about managing player expectations and session zero in a future video. But for your first session, just keep it light. The first session doesn't have to be too long. Long sessions might scare away new players. Tell them that the game may take around two hours but may fluctuate depending on the number of players playing and their choice of action. These adventure modules usually start with a box text, a passage that you can read to establish the context of the adventure and the situation the player character or PCs find themselves in. You can do your own introduction, of course, but reading from the box text is just easier. As you open your eyes, you find yourself in an eerie cavern. The interior is dimly lit by the sunlight shining through the hole in the ceiling. You feel sharp pain in your head as memory of recent events snap back into your mind. You were hired by Roland Tress, Sheriff of Midheaven, to investigate the mysterious disappearance of travelers who were last seen in the vicinity of Hollow Rock Hills. As you investigate the area, the ground beneath you crumbled, throwing you underground, and upon hitting the rocky floor, you blacked out for unknown amount of time. Now that you have regained consciousness, you find yourself in a man-made cave with an upturned wagon to your side, and beyond it stood a heavy wooden door. This adventure is pretty linear, and the premise is easy to understand. You can expect that without telling the players anything, they know that they should find a way out. But don't be surprised if new players don't know what to do. It is okay to instruct them, railroad them a bit until they are ready to get off. Now is a great time for you to ask your players to introduce their characters. There is no pressure to be too creative. In longer campaigns, their characters might have personal reasons for coming to the town of Midheaven and taking the job. But if they couldn't come up with anything now, just ask them to say the characters' names, class, and race. That is enough. After the brief introduction, they hear a moan emanating from the deeper parts of the natural cave. Help me! Help me! You don't have to do a voice if you can't do it. If you have been watching Matthew Mercer's Critical Role, remember that he is a trained voice actor with years of experience. He is bringing something he is already a pro at to a game that he loves. I, like many other DMs, can't do voices, so we just say what the voice sounds like. Help me! Help me! A raspy, low-pitched voice called out. I have been trapped here for days. My leg is pinned under my wagon. Please hurry before they come to collect me like the others. The module expects the players to interact with this human merchant named Ollie Coopersmith. They can free him from under the wagon with a strength ability roll of 12. If they succeeded, they will be rewarded with two healing potions, and one if they at least attempted to free him. He will also provide the characters with the information from these dot points. He is going to tell them about the mysterious hooded man who came in from the southern door and took his companions away. There is no script here. Just imagine the dialogue of a scared man who have been trapped in a cave for two days without food. There is no point for him to bring up the topic of what he's going to sell in Midheaven unless he is asked. Just play him naturally. But of course, players are notoriously unpredictable. Instead of saving the poor man, they could be wasting their time arguing among themselves. Who gets to approach the creepy disembodied voice first? They could even be arguing to burn the whole cave interior just to be sure that they are not dealing with a creature from the thing. Argument within the group can be interesting and even funny at times, you don't have to stop it. But if you sense that it is starting to cause frustration, find ways to advance the story. The module expects them to save the merchant, get through the door by lockpicking it or breaking it, and fight the cultists in the next room. But they are just arguing among themselves here, not knowing what to do. New players may not have the problem-solving skill to assess the situation and find a solution to their problems. So you may need to be blunt sometimes and tell them that Arguing here is not going to get them out of the hole. Or I can just let the event come to them instead. This will steer them back to their main goal, which is to get out of this dungeon. It also creates a sense that the dungeon is alive and dynamic instead of a passive object to be acted on. Alerted by the noise of their argument, four cultists burst through the door. Look who we've got here. More fresh bodies for the ritual. And combat starts. Roll initiative, everyone. This is unorthodox. But to make it really easy for new players to understand what is happening, I usually reveal the enemy's armor class, hit points, and bonuses to their attack for their first combat. The stats for the enemies are in the monster manual. 
They usually have the stats for unique enemies at the back of the module, but for your convenience, I have all the stats at the back of this adventure. I will get into the details of combat in future videos. So let's fast forward the fight. Cultists are easy enemies. It is unlikely that the players will lose. Let's just say that the players are doing remarkably well and they have killed two out of the four cultists without breaking a sweat. Obviously, this is not good for the cultists. It is only a matter of time that they lose. And if I continue the fight, I'm just prolonging the inevitable. And it can get boring fighting a fight they know they are going to win anyway. So I decided that the cultists make a run for it to end the battle early. But I also want to spice things up a bit because I don't want that first fight to be too easy. So I will have the cultists plot something and have them run out of the room. I will use the opportunity to teach the players about opportunity attacks. Then the cultists return to the cavern with two zombies on their next turn. I am just adding these zombies by DM Fiat, which means that I am just making this up as I go along. Similarly, I can reduce the number of enemies or make them really stupid if the players are having a very hard time with them. But this is actually a reward for my players for doing well. I won't reveal the statistics of the zombies so that they can learn that the zombies are easier to hit but have a lot more hit points. Not only that, they have the undead fortitude feature that might bring them back to one hit points when brought to zero. This is going to teach them how dangerous is the zombie swarm they will face later on. Foreshadowing is very important. I will talk about this in more detail in future videos. Anyhow, most likely they will win against the initial group of cultists. As enemies are down to zero hit points, they are considered kill. But the players can choose to knock them out with a melee attack instead. Since first time players won't know that option, you can just ask them if they want to do that. Dungeon masters are not the player's enemy. The game is a tool for them to entertain their players with. Of course, it doesn't mean that the DM should let the player win every time. You should provide them with fair challenge, though different players may have different idea of what is considered fair. My experience DMing have repeatedly proven that players are usually their own worst enemy. There is a good chance that they will kill all the cultists anyway because they don't negotiate with evil, thus depriving themselves of the information they could learn by interrogating them. This is the place where the cultists used to stand guard. They can investigate the area and check out the trap chest with the do not touch note glued on top. I think it's fair to spring the trap on them without more hints. Because it's obviously fishy. They can take a short rest here if they need to recover their hit points. There is no designated area for short rest in the dungeon. So you should just consider what makes sense. The next room is the boss's ritual room. It is unlikely that they can take rest in the presence of the head cultist who is in the process of creating zombies. They will most likely get discovered if they loiter around there. But as a DM, don't be too quick to say no. Personally, I would have every single one of them make a style check to beat DC20 difficulty class just so that they can rest quietly over there. It is highly improbable but not impossible. If they succeed, then you should just let it happen as you facepalm yourself. By the way, short rest takes at least one hour in-game time, not real time. Once the players have finished calculating their recoveries and are ready to continue the adventure, the rest is over. It could just take five seconds in real time or three minutes. It doesn't matter. The same goes for long rest. Many people have asked me this question, so I will have to clarify it here. After the rest, they decided to confront a head cultist. So I read out the box text. <coughs> in the center of this cavernous room between the stone altar and the cracked statue of a demonic entity, you can see a decrepit man in a gold threaded cloak, flanked by two watchful goblins. On the altar is a dissected cadaver that he gleefully stuffs with green glowing slime. As he notices your presence, he looks up, points his finger at before I could finish the text, the wizard decided to hurl a firebolt at the head cultist. It is up to you whether you want to honor your player's action and let them get a cheap shot. In this instance, I am feeling generous, so I would give her the free attack. But I will not tell her any more information she did not learn because she interrupted the villain's monologue. I also want to create a moral dilemma for the players. So I will have the head cultist parlay with the party and offer them freedom as long as they leave peacefully. He flips the lever to reveal an exit at the southern part of the cave. They can go away now. All they need to do is to leave the merchant in the cave for his use later. This should create a bit of drama. But if your players are like some heartless douchebags that I know, they would choose to leave without batting an eyelid. 
Then, the moment they are making their way out of the cave, I would have the cultists shut the exit suddenly and flip the other lever to spring the spike trap at them. By now, you should tell them that it is possible to discern whether an NPC is lying by rolling inside. Roll initiative. It is time for another combat. Usually, modules provide some basic strategy for enemies. For this combat encounter, the head cultist will use his action every turn to wave his green skull talisman at the air to command his special zombie servants to move and act. He will only personally attack the players if he lost possession of the skull or if all the zombies are destroyed. There are six zombies, two goblins, and the head cultist. Your players are dangerously outnumbered, so they have to play it smart. There are a few ways to get out of this mess. The common gamer's answer is to rush the boss and kill him. But there are a lot of obstacles between him and the character. If your players are creative enough, they should come up with ideas such as shooting the skull and breaking it, lasso a rope at the statue and pull it to crush the cultist, or shoot the lever so that they can open the exit from a safe distance and run away. If you see them struggling, drop them a few hints. As a DM, you are not bound by any duty to kill them. In my circle, it is bad karma to kill first-time players unless it is necessary to the narrative. But it is completely acceptable if they are asking for it by doing something completely stupid like jumping into a pool of lava. Some will do it just to see what will happen or to upset the dungeon master. It can be a form of entertainment for some players to mess with you. Trust me. No, I am not up. So let's say that the player somehow made it by escaping. Even though it goes against the module's intention for them to fight and win, it is not a game over because DND is not a video game. They don't repeat a stage just because they did not achieve the victory condition. The story goes on. In fact, they may think that they have triumphed for being able to survive such overwhelming odds. You just make up the logical aftermath and hook up to the next adventure. But feel free to guilt trip them with the fact that they have completely forgotten about Ollie the merchant and left him in the cave to be the next subject of the ritual. Not exploring the whole of the dungeon is a very common thing. Sometimes even less than half of the written material get used. I also ad-libbed a lot of the events just to make it more interesting for my players. So don't be a slave to the text. Before I end the video, let me remind you that there is no single best style for dungeon mastering. Some dungeon masters are better at certain style, but it doesn't hurt to know more about others because the best game your players will ever experience is the one that's run with their preferences in mind. I will get into the theoretical side of dungeon mastering after going through the technical side of the game. The next episode in the series will be about monsters and NPCs. If you think that this video has been useful, give it a thumbs up. It will help budding dungeon masters to discover it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and press that bell button so that you will be notified when the next episode is released. CJ, over and out.